Hello everyone, it's another haul video. If you want to see what goodies I've picked up over the past month, feel free to keep watching. Okay, I've got 14 fragrances to share with you today. Some of them are just likes, some of them I like a lot, and some of them I love. They're in no particular order, so let's just get started. Okay, the first fragrance on my list is a fragrance by the House of Coquillette, and it's called Cookie Crunch. And I got this because of the notes listed. And um, some of these I wrote the notes down, some of them I didn't. On this one, I did write the notes down. So first of all, the box, I mean the bottle, it looks like a box. And at first I thought that this was the box, but it's actually the bottle. Not a huge fan of that. Um, but anyway, so the notes are biscuit, meringue, whipped cream, sugar, vanilla, and Amalfi lemon. Sounds amazing, right? Um, starts off smelling like the most amazing lemon cleaner you've ever smelled in your life. And I was a little horrified. This was the only blind buy, I think, in the whole batch. Um, I was kind of horrified that I had spent that much money on a lemon cleaner. Fortunately, the, the lemon cleaner um, overall scent kind of dies down and then it becomes, it really kind of becomes a lemon meringue pie. That's what it smells like. The couple of times I've worn it, so that's the positive. The negative is that, you know, it's almost a skin scent on me. So um, yeah, it doesn't, it's not been doing well in the cold weather. I think I'm gonna give this, you know, more of a chance in the warmer weather. This will probably do much better in the warmer months. And it smells a teensy, teensy bit like Unknown Pleasures. Um, just that, that beautiful gourmand lemon fragrance. Um, I like Unknown Pleasures better at this moment, but I'm going to keep giving it a keep giving it a chance, especially as it warms up. So yeah, that's Cookie Crunch. The next fragrance on the list is a fragrance that I talked about in my Spicy Fragrances video, but I only had it for one day when I filmed that video, but it has rapidly become one of my favorite fragrances, probably top 10 in my collection now, or my fragrance wardrobe. And that is called Kaftan by the House of YSL. This was recommended to me by one of my subscribers. I think her name is Madalena Magdalena. Thank you so much for that. Um, you were right on the nose with me liking it. And to say that I like it would be an understatement. I absolutely love this fragrance. This fragrance has all the things that I love in perfumes. This has, um, this starts off really smoky, but it's a sweet smokiness. and there's an incense vibe it definitely has incense there's resins and there's amber so it is a beautiful smoky sweet resinous amber fragrance that i that i absolutely love and is by far one of my favorite fragrances um, at the time being so yeah i was happy to get this actually i got this as a birthday gift so to myself so um yay me on this one <laughs> Okay, the next fragrance on my list is a fragrance that I got at the cosmetics company store, which just happens to be about five minutes from my house, and that is um, Twilight Shimmer by Michael Kors. This has been around for a while, and um, I've never smelled it before. But um, yeah, so it is a fragrance that has plum in it, and I'm having a moment with plum and black currant. I think I have four fragrances that either have plum or black currant in them at the moment. But um, yeah, this is a beautiful plum and red fruit fragrance that has oud and praline. So when I first smell this, um, it smells very universally appealing. I can tell that it's a designer fragrance. So it's, very, it's a very safe universally appealing fragrance. I definitely get the plum. I definitely get that plummy dark fruit note. It is woody. I definitely get the wood. It doesn't smell like typical oud, which is a good thing. Um, and it's very sweet from the praline. So yeah, it's almost a gourmand scent to me. It's heading in that direction. But when I smell this, it, to me it smells like date night. I think of date night because it's an alluring fragrance, um, date night or cold weather months. So for the first couple times that I've worn it, 
I've really enjoyed it. So getting to know this, but uh, yeah, beautiful plum, plum centered fragrance by Michael Kors, and that is Twilight Shimmer. The next fragrance on my list is a fragrance that I picked up because I did a sample swap with one of my subscribers, and her name is Sammy, and we've been having fun uh, sending samples to each other. And the sample kind of sat in the box for a couple weeks. I didn't really pick it up because of the name. The name just didn't appeal to me. And this is by the House of Mansara, and this is called Oud Orchid. So, um, yeah, I don't know, just something about it didn't draw me to it. And then I sprayed it. Oh my gosh. This is, this is a love. This is one of the fragrances that I absolutely love. This is definitely a gourmand fragrance. This, so the notes are coconut, peach, orange, orchid, patchouli, vanilla, amber, white musk, and a woody note. This um, smells like a tropical dessert. When I smell this fragrance, I think of the tropics. I think of going on vacation somewhere warm and having an amazing dessert like a tropical flan. That's what this smells like to me. This is absolutely a beautiful, fruity, gourmand fragrance. Um, the name is a little misleading. I smell no oud. And I don't even think that oud is listed as a note. I think just woody notes are listed, but what a surprise uh, love this was. So I am super thrilled with this one, even though I've worn it a couple times. I'm absolutely in love with it, yeah. So this will be a fragrance that I will be wearing a lot in the warmer months. So that's Oud Orchid by Mansara. So the next fragrance on my list is a fragrance I got because it's supposed to smell like one of my favorite candles of all time. And that candle is called Baze by Diptyque. And the fragrance that's supposed to smell like it is called L'Ombre d'un Lot by Diptyque. And this one I actually bought uh, secondhand on Mercari from a lovely seller. And um, yeah, so it's a very unique fragrance. It's been around for a while, since the 1980s, which surprised me. Um, yeah, so this is definitely one of the most green fragrances in my collection. I'm not a huge fan of green fragrances and I'm not a huge fan of aquatic fragrances. So I don't have a lot of either of those in my collection. But this one is really good. It is a very realistic greenery fragrance. This smells like the stems and the leaves of something in your backyard after you've been working in the yard for an hour. It's very, very strong. There's something bitter in it. I don't know if that's the lime, but I definitely get some sort of a almost bitter note. But it's very, it's very fresh. It's very refreshing. It just screams spring to me. Um, after a little bit, that that greenness, that very strong greenness kind of dries down. And then I do get the rose and the black currant, which is quite lovely. Um, yeah, this just is such a great fragrance for the spring and maybe the summer. And I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, so that's L'Ombre d'Allo by Diptyque. Okay, the next fragrance on the list is another fragrance I got because of a sample swap with my little friend Sammy. And it's a flanker of the Armani C line, and it's one I'd never heard of before, and it's called Armani C Le Parfum. And it only comes in one size, this particular size, and you can only get it at Fragrance Net, which I did. But, um, and I don't even own the original Armani C, but I've smelled it many times. So it has that the same black currant note in the center, which I love. But this one also has, it has, it's a darker, more boozy version of C. So this has, um, so this has the black currant, this has incense, this has amber, there's benzoin, jasmine, and vanilla. And you know, even though I don't think that there's a boozy note in it, it, it smells boozy. It almost smells like mulled wine. Um, yeah, when I smell it, it smells like the date night. This is not an everyday fragrance in my opinion. For me at least, this is, this reads date night 
or something I would wear more in the colder months, but I would definitely wear this, you know, going out or on a date night in the warmer months. But yeah, this one, even though I've worn it a couple times, I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, see si, Armani C. Si La Bafam by um, George Armani. <sighs> okay, where were we? Uh, somehow I forgot to charge my camera battery, so I had to take a little break. <laughs> Um, we're going to pick off where we left off or where I left off and that is um, with a fragrance by the House of Carna Barcelona and that is called Rose and Dragon. Um, so the jury is still out on this one. I've only worn it a couple times and it's a like and that's where I'll stick with it. So um, this is a very gothic rose and um, maybe that's where the the name dragon comes in um, yeah so this fragrance to me is is very dark and gothic it has notes of um, two types of roses so it has Turkish and Bulgarian rose it has incense there's honey there is a note of strawberry now the type of strawberry that is in this to me is really on the overripe side so it's a very ripe, dark strawberry, and there is some sort of animalic note in here. I know that there's leather and there's castorium, which are both animalic notes. So there's a little bit, I'm picking up a little bit of funkiness, which is probably why I just only like it at this point. I'm not a huge fan of animalic notes and fragrances. I can do leather, um, but only if it's not super, super heavy. So so yeah, um, not sure about this one, but I do like parts of it. Um, I like the rose part, I like the strawberry, I like the incense, I like the honey. Um, it's just the tad bit of an animalic note which I pick up, and maybe I pick up because I'm really sensitive to animalic notes. Um, and some people may not pick it up, so yeah. So Rose and Dragon uh, by Carna Barcelona is a, um, is a, the jury's out on this one right now. Okay, the next fragrance on the list is a fragrance by the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. And I have several fragrances by this house and I got this because I wanted something for summer. And this fragrance is called Batacuda. And this fragrance is a perfect example of how dabber bottles don't really do justice as to how a fragrance performs. So. This fragrance is supposed to be an homage to the, uh, the carnival in Brazil on the beaches of Ipanema. And it's supposed to smell like the sights and sounds down there. Um, and the drink Caiprihana, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is, I think that's the national drink of Brazil. And the notes in this are lime, mint, sugarcane, tiare, ylang ylang, seawater, salt, and coconut. And, you know, I don't really like aquatic scents a whole lot. And this definitely smells like a tropical drink. The problem is, is that the couple times I've worn it, um, my skin turns a little bit sour. So the jury is still out on how this is going to work out for me. I think it might be the, the seawater note or the salt note that's turning a tad bit sour on my skin. It's approaching kind of a, a smell of sweat. Doesn't sound super pleasant. Um, yeah, so note the, uh, the jury is still out on this one. I'm not sure about this one. I'll have to give this a little bit more time and I'm gonna try it in the warmer weather. But um, yeah, so we'll see about this one. This one is, I'm not even sure this one is a like yet. This one is, Let's see how this performs in the future, <laughs> but I will give it another chance. But uh, yeah, that's Batacuda. The next fragrance on my list is a fragrance by the House of Annie Tower, and I'm very partial to that house because they created one of my favorite fragrances in the whole wide world, and that is Le Du Des Américaines. I've been wearing that for years. And this fragrance that I got fairly recently is called Fiyun Rose de Kandahar. And this is a unique uh, take based on rose and it is based on rose oil that is from the region of Afghanistan and it's very rare and it's hard to harvest so it's of 
high quality and high value. And this, uh, that rose oil is also blended with some gourmand notes. And those notes are apricot, almond, cinnamon, and blonde tobacco. So this is just a beautifully blended gourmandy smooth rose that I, it doesn't have a note of amber listed, but it smells amber-like in the dry down to me. I absolutely love this. This is a definite love. Even for the few times that I've worn it, I totally love this fragrance. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. And it's, it's a super unique, bright take on um, a rose fragrance. So yeah, initial thoughts are very positive on this one. So Fee and Rose to Kandahar. The next fragrance on my list is a fragrance that was gifted to me, and it's by the House of Louvain, and that is because Black Jade by the House of Louvain is one of my very favorite fragrances of all time. So this one is called Epidore, and this is a plum-centered fragrance, um, and it's a very different plum than the Michael Kors fragrance. This is a very sweet plum but it's not syrupy and it's not heavy. It's, it's a very ripe, juicy plum. There is some tonka in here. There's vanilla, almost like a hay note in here, hay or vetiver. I don't think it's listed in part of the notes. Um, some sort of white floral. Yes, it's a very linear fragrance. It kind of stays the same throughout the life of the fragrance, but it's just absolutely beautiful. It very much reads spring to me and even summer just because it's so, it's such a light fragrance. Um, I absolutely love it for the few times I've worn it. This is definitely in the positive category. So first impressions are really, really good. Um, apparently this is supposed to smell like poison I never had a bottle of poison. I remember smelling poison and I remember really not liking it. So either my nose has changed tremendously or it really doesn't smell that much like poison. Absolutely not blind by safe. None of these are blind by safe, um, especially because of the price. But if, if you love something like plum centered fragrances, this is definitely worth getting a sample of because it's lovely and it lasts for days on clothes. I sprayed it on my jacket and I smelled my jacket like a week later and it still smelled amazing. So yeah, that's Epidora by the House of Louvain. And the next fragrance on my list is another fragrance by the House of Louvain and it is another fragrance that was gifted to me for my birthday, which was just, um, just a couple weeks ago. So I haven't really worn this a lot. I think I've only worn it once, and I've tested it out on paper a couple times. So this is called Gin Fizz. Sorry about that. And um, this fragrance apparently was a tribute to Grace Kelly when she won an Oscar for some movie, I believe. And the reason why it is called Gin Fizz is because the popular drink of the time, um, during that time, maybe in the 1950s, was a Gin Fizz. So yes, this is very effervescent. This is very crisp. The notes in this are juniper, lemon, bergamot, there's a white floral of some sort, there's musk and oak moss, this absolutely reads summer to me, maybe even spring. It almost is aquatic. It's so effervescent. Very nice, very light. I can see this doing really, really well in the summer. So first impressions are very good for Gin Fizz. Yeah. Okay, the next two fragrances on my list are from the House of Teo Cabanel, and I'm gonna start speeding through these because it's midnight where I'm at. Um, yes, yeah, so the first one is called Ooh La La, and it was not a love at first sniff. It was a, I really like this on the second go around, and it's heading into the, I think I might love this fragrance. Um, it's super different, and it just screams spring to me. This one has hazelnut, saffron, there's orris, tobacco, musk, and um, sandalwood. This is just... A beautiful, what I smell right away is 
orris. And this type of orris smells like a carrot. It's very vegetal. And it's beautiful. If you don't like the smell of carrot, you will not like this fragrance. Um, and it's super nutty. It's a beautiful nutty fragrance, almost like an unripened nut on the vine or on the branch. Um, there's a little bit of saffron in here. It's a little musky, but the reason I love this is because, or I like it a lot heading into the love direction, is it's just so different and it's so fresh and it just smells so much like spring to me. Yeah, it's a it's a real different take on sandalwood, which I love, but it's a, it's a spring-like sandalwood, very fresh take on sandalwood, um, something that I don't have. So uh, first impressions at this point are very, very good for Ooh La La by Teo Cabanal. The next fragrance is another fragrance by the house of Teo Cabanal, and this is called Je Ne Sais Quoi, which means I don't know what in French, and another fragrance that just screams spring to me. I love it for its uniqueness, and it has notes in this which I absolutely adore, and I'm totally in right now. So this has notes of rice, matcha tea, and sandalwood, I believe. But this is such a photorealistic fragrance. Right in the beginning, it smells like steamed rice. It smells like you just took the lid off of a pot of rice that you're cooking. Steamed rice, and then immediately you smell the, the matcha tea, the beautiful green tea. I absolutely love it. And then the dry down, there's sandalwood. Oh my gosh, a beautiful, great fragrance for spring. I'm so glad I picked this up, not for everyone. You have to really love those notes. Um, but um, I'm really, really glad I got this and first impressions are really good. So je ne sais quoi. Okay, the last fragrance on my list is a fragrance I discovered thanks to Melissa Jean and I, everybody knows who Melissa Jean is, but I will link her down below. But we, um, we do these little sample swaps. We just send each other little samples and she sent me a bunch by the, the house um, or the brand Commodity and I had never heard of them before. And I liked a bunch of them, but my favorite one was called Vetiver. I really like Vetiver as a note. And this is a really nice, unique take on Vetiver. So, um, yeah, this one has, so there's Vetiver. There's also patchouli. This fragrance has some sweetness to it. And I think that's because there is blackberry and apple, but it's not a fruity fragrance. Um, there's jasmine, there's a little bit of jasmine, but it's not an indolic jasmine. It's certainly not white floral heavy, um, which is good because sometimes I struggle with some white florals. It's very creamy. I think there's a little bit of sandalwood. I, this was a surprise. Absolutely love this. This is not discontinued. I just went to their website because I'm eyeing a few more by this house. I think I really like the gold one and I love the tea one. And, um, gosh, what's the other one? I think it's Tonka. So yeah, I have others on my wish list, but as you can tell, um, I need to take a break till next month uh, for my purchasing. So yeah, a, a really nice fragrance from the brand commodity, Vet Divert, which I love. So that's it. That does it for my recent haul video. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you had a good time and I'll see you for the next one.